Hello and welcome to this podcast. This is the third in a series of podcasts in which we look at the time apportioned base cost in the eighth schedule of the Income Tax Act. In the first two podcasts, we looked at the simple time apportioned base cost formula and the modified time apportioned base cost formula, which takes account of expenditure incurred after the 1st of October 2001. In this podcast, I want to have a look at what happens to those two formula when we add selling costs incurred in disposing of the asset. We're going to use the same example as we used in the first two podcasts. So we're going to take this asset purchased four years before the 1st of October 2001 and sold four years afterwards. And hopefully you remember that we constructed this timeline and we said if we bought it for 20 and we sold it for 100, then half of the gain of 80 should be added to the base cost so as to exclude it from the effects of CGT. Now, what happens when we sell the asset for 100, but we must pay a commission of 10% to the agent in order for them to facilitate the sale? So actually what we're left with is net proceeds of 90. Our gain has now changed somewhat. We've now only made a gain of 70. And the question is, what would our gain have been if we had sold it on the 1st of October 2001? Well, if our gain is 70, then the pre-October 2001 gain must be half of that amount because we owned it for four years before 2001 and four years after 2001. That means we are trying to exclude 35 Rand from being subject to CGT. That's that bit that relates to the pre-October 2001 period in which we held the asset. Now, how are we going to achieve that? There's our time apportioned base cost formula. And the problem that we're going to have is that the agent's commission is a cost, but B is only expenditure incurred before October 2001. That means that B excludes selling expenses because those are obviously incurred right at the point that we dispose of the asset. So how are we going to take those into account? Because if we'd sold it on the 1st of October 2001, we still would have incurred some selling expenses. The answer is that we're going to have to adjust our proceeds. So P in the formula is proceeds minus selling costs, which means that P is actually 100 that we sold the asset for minus the 10 of the selling costs equals 90 Rand. Now we can use that in the time apportioned base cost formula. So B is still 20, but P is now 90 Rand. So we're saying 20 Rand plus half of the gain of 70 Rand equals a valuation date value of 55 Rand. Then we, when we calculate our capital gain, we're going to see we have proceeds of 100. Now, importantly, at this point, the proceeds are what we sold it for. We're not subtracting the selling costs from this number. Our base cost is the 55 Rand that we've just calculated, plus the additional 10 Rand of selling expenses. The base cost includes all allowable expenditure, whenever it was incurred. That selling expense is an expenditure, so that must be added to the base cost. That gives us a base cost of 65 Rand and a capital gain for CGT purposes of 35 Rand. That capital gain of 35 Rand is half of the total capital gain, and it's that portion in green, the portion that we expected to be subject to CGT. Now, what happens when we have expenditure incurred after the 1st of October 2001. Cast your mind back to our second podcast and we added a third story to our original two-story house. Well, that was the original example that we had constructed and we said that on the basis of having built a third story we could now sell this house for 150 Rand whereas previously we would have sold it for only 100 Rand. And we said 40 Rand would have arisen before October 2001, at which point it was a two-story house, and 80 Rand arose after 2001, partly as a result of the increase in value and partly because of that improvement that we made. Now, what happens when we have to pay 10% of that commission, or 10% of the selling price as commission, to the agent? 
So although we sold it for 150, we're only left with 135. Well, we're going to use our modified TABC formulas, but now we're going to start with that formula R. We know we've got a gain of 105 Rand. And from that 105 Rand, we can see that 35 Rand should still be that amount that should be excluded from CGT, as in our first example. How are we going to achieve that? Whatever's left, the 70 Rand, that should be subject to CGT, and that's what we're going to check ourselves against. The answer is we are going to work with proceeds minus selling cost again, but now because we're in the modified TABC formula, we're going to start working with R instead of P. So R is now proceeds minus selling costs, which is 150 minus 15 equals 135. That means P is going to be R times B over A plus B equals 135 times 20 over 30. The selling costs are not factored into A or B because they've already been subtracted from R. That gives P equal to 90 Rand. You can see that looks familiar. It's the same as in the first example, so it looks like we're on track. Now we've got P, we can plug that into our formula. And y equals 20 plus 90 minus 20 times 4 over 8. Again, it looks the same as the first example. And it should, because up until the 1st of October 2001, these two houses were identical. It was only after October 2001 that the third story was added, and we're not concerned with that period for the purposes of establishing the valuation date value. So that gives us a valuation date value of 55 Rand, and now we can start plugging that into our calculation. Our proceeds are 150 Rand. Remember at this point the proceeds are not adjusted for selling costs. Selling costs are a cost, they must be added to base cost now. Our base cost is the 55 Rand that we've just calculated, plus the 10 Rand improvement, that's the third story. That only happened after the 1st of October 2001. So it's not in the base cost unless we add it on. And we must add it on because it's allowable expenditure. And we must add on the agent's commission, the selling cost. Because again, that's a cost, it's allowable, it must be part of the base cost. That gives us a total base cost of 80 Rand. And that gives us a capital gain for CGT purposes of 70 Rand. That's the 70 Rand in green. That's the bit that arose after October 2001 that's the bit we expected to be subject to CGT. So hopefully you can see whether we are in the basic TABC formula or the modified TABC formula. If we adjust our proceeds for the selling costs, only for the purposes of the formulas, we come out at the correct allocation of the gain to pre-October 2001 and post-October 2001. That's all on the time apportioned based cost. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.